Hi, and welcome to the Teachings of Paul Challenge that we're doing. And we're going to go through all of Paul's writings in the New Testament, which is a lot of books, like 14 of them. And today we're starting with 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Bear with me, my voice is a little hoarse. I had a lot going on today outside, and we were, we were super busy, and so my voice is suffering, but we'll bear through it. Um, and thank you for joining us, whether you're watching from Facebook, IGTV, or YouTube, or if you're listening on podcast, thank you. And we did want to let you know, we are giving away a gift card from Dunkin', from Dunkin Donuts that you can enjoy. All you have to do is we're gonna do a drawing and you have to upload a picture from however you are watching us. So take a picture, snap it on there, put it up, we'll see it, and you'll be entered for a drawing, and then we'd love to bless you with that gift card. So please do that now, and let's begin. So, 1 Thessalonians, this is Paul's uh, first book that he wrote, and it is an epistle to the Thessalonian church um, that was under a lot of persecution at the time, um, as pretty much all of Christendom at the time, because Basically, the Jews hated them. The Romans realized that there was discord in their provinces that they owned. And one of the churches that was having these issues was in Thessalonica, or as we call it, in in Thessalonians. Um, Also, one cool fact that I learned about Thessalonians is that the city, even though it's called like Thessalonica or Thessalonia right now, it is still around and um, they have a population of 300,000 people, and it's one of the very few cities written in the New Testament that actually exists today. Um, And also another little factoid is that during World War II, 60,000 Jewish people were actually taken out and and they were were killed from this area. So very sad to know that, but anyways, just a little historical context as to what happened there. So Paul wrote this amazing, epistle to there, basically a letter, and it wasn't just him who was involved in the writing. If you go to verse 1, it shows that this letter is from Paul, Silas, and Timothy. So all three of them had something to do with the writing of this letter. And really, it's a short chapter, but it has something amazing in here. Obviously, Paul always writes about how he gives thanks for them, and he loves them, and he just wants to bless them. But in verse 4, I'm going to read a little bit through here, verse 4 through 7, We know, dear brothers and sisters, that God loves you and has chosen you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true, and you know of our concern for you from the way we lived when we were with you. So you received the message from from us with joy and from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering that it brought you. And in this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. And as a result, you have become an example to all the believers in Greece and throughout both Macedonia. And I don't know how to say that word, but I'm going to say Achaia or Achaia. So let me unwrap this for you because this is really the key message in this chapter. When they brought the good news, Paul and Silas and Timothy, they didn't just go and preach to them. They demonstrated it with the power of the Holy Ghost. It says right here, for when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but with the power for the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. And I love that because so often people today, especially in America, we we preach the word, but we don't allow the Holy Spirit to give time to operate and to show the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So instead of just going out and leading leading the lost to the Lord, then take it a step further and ask God to show you. Maybe it's giving you a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or prophesying. Maybe they're sick and they need to be healed right then on the street. How amazing is that? That you could go out, pray with someone for salvation, and then they, they could be healed right there in front of other people. And then you could lead the whole family to the Lord. So I thought that was really crucial. And then what I loved right after that is their lifestyle spoke to the people. It says here, and you know of our concern for you from the way we lived when we were with you. So as Christians, this right here in the first writing from Paul says, you need to live a lifestyle that draws men to Christ. 
You can't just speak it. You've got to follow it. You've got to do what the word says. And I really love that in the first chapter, bam, bam, Paul hits it right upside the head and says, hey, this is why we're writing to you. We want to encourage you. We know you're going through suffering because the Christian church is under attack right now, but you are an example to all the area. He says, you're, as a result, you have become an example to all the believers in Greece, an entire country. They all knew of the church in Thessalonians because of how amazing they were putting up with the perseverance. I'm sorry, persecution, not perseverance. They were putting up with the persecution against the church from the Jews, from the Romans, from whoever else. And yet, it's because they brought the gospel to them with signs and wonders following them. Hallelujah and by living a lifestyle that showed them this is how you live as a Christian. Don't be cussing, don't be getting drunk, don't be living like the rest of the world. Don't be, don't be an act of sin, but follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So I really love chapter one of Thessalonians, and I love the fact that this city still exists today. I'm in the Macedonia area or country, and it's just, it's just fascinating that here we are reading of this, it's still there, that country right now, it's just 300,000 people there, and you know, it's from biblical times. So I hope you learned something today. Um, please don't forget to share this video or share that you're watching. We love that you're with us, but we wanna get the word out there to more people so they can join us, because tomorrow we're gonna read chapter two of Thessalonians. So please be with us sometime between six and 9 p.m. We love you, God bless you, and have an amazing rest of your evening.